Hi ladies, it's Gloria here. And today I'm making a video about my dollhouse. I've had uh, some requests from other reborn moms who uh, also have dollhouses and those who make miniatures and love miniatures. And uh, I had intended to do this a while back. But I have to tell you, this is like my fifth or sixth try at this. I've had nothing, nothing short of just problem after problem trying to get this uh, videoed. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to try one more time. And uh, I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, it may be a little lengthy, so I apologize for that. I will try to make it as short as possible. But I wanted to give you a little history first about my dollhouse. Um, back in 1961, when uh, I had just uh, barely turned 13 years of age, um, there was an article in a Woman's Day magazine called A Dollhouse. And uh, I... Um, when I saw the article in the dollhouse, I absolutely fell in love with it. My parents uh, could not afford to buy me a dollhouse when I was a child, and most of my little girlfriends had the metal type dollhouses. You, those of you, um, you know, around my age uh, in the early fifties, early sixties, might recall those dollhouses. They were metal, and uh, the furnishings were plastic. And I had wanted one. Uh, you know, for as long as I could remember. And uh, so anyway, when I saw this article in the Woman's Day magazine, um, it was a dollhouse that you could make just from odds and ends. And I thought, well, you know, I'm almost 13 years old. I can, I can do that now. I can, I can finally have the dollhouse that I wanted. So I got my mother to order the instruction booklet that uh, uh, came with it. That I think it was something like 50 cents or something, something like that. And uh, I started saving cardboard boxes and just little household items that the article had mentioned that were used uh, in the making of the furnishings. And so when I got the instruction booklet and started to look at it, I realized that really it was a lot more difficult than I could ever uh, have imagined, particularly at that point in my life. I just did not have um, the expertise and the abilities at 13 years old to make this. So I was very saddened, but uh, nevertheless uh, loved the dollhouse. Well, as time went on, you know, I forgot about the dollhouse. And I've told you all before that I've loved dolls my entire life. Uh, I was 14 years old before I was basically, I felt like I was forced to stop playing dolls um, out of just, I guess, sheer embarrassment. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's another reason I'm so thankful for the reborn dolls and the reborn community because it has um, given me uh, a chance to um, uh, enjoy dolls once more. But anyway, getting back to the dollhouse, uh, this was in 1961 when this article came out in the magazine. In 1968, um, after I married, I had a dream of the dollhouse, and I could see it just as plainly uh, as if I were looking at it. And, um, you know, I did not have the instruction book anymore. Of course, the magazine was long gone. I had not seen this dollhouse or even thought about it uh, since I was 13. And uh, all of a sudden in my dream, I could see it. And when I woke up, I told my husband about the dream. And I said, you know, I, I majored in art in college I now have the ability to make this, and I now have the means to make it. I'm going to do it. Well, I could not remember where the um, magazine, I couldn't remember which magazine it was. I just remembered that it was one of the small ones that you buy uh, in the grocery store. 
on your way out at the checkout, you know, they have the smaller ladies' magazines. And so I wrote several of the magazines and told them what it was that I was looking for. And Woman's Day um, contacted me back, and uh, they sent me the pages out of their out of one of their magazines. Now, this was from 1961 to 1968. And so I started on uh, this project. It took me 10 years to complete the furnishings and the dollhouse. And, uh, you know, in between that, I had family, and it's always been just something of a decoration in my children's room. Uh, because, you know, the pieces are actually too delicate to play with. But uh, I never had intended for it to be played with in the first place. It was just strictly for decoration and for the sheer enjoyment of making the miniatures and um, uh, seeing the delightful little pieces uh, uh, that, you know, made from different odds and ends, basically. And uh, so anyway, I, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my husband and my father made the actual house out of plywood. And uh, it's basically on a, not quite to scale, but it's basically one inch to 12 inches. So it's a little bit larger than your typical uh dollhouse that you see now you know the kits and all but anyway I'll show you these pages these are some of the articles that were in the original magazine and I loved all the bright colors and everything and I set out to make my house as close to the pictures uh, as possible and I will turn this sheet over so you can see they're completely worn out because they've been used and used and used. Um, I, you know, poured over these pictures to figure out exactly how to make them, uh, make the pieces because I had no instructions at this point. I just had to go by the things that I could recognize, uh, you know, the particular sizes, say toothpicks and straws and that sort of thing and from there I <clears throat> determined my um, the ratio size but um, anyway a doll's house for you to make that all little girls will adore and um, so I will now show you the actual doll house here I'm on the floor so give me just a moment to move the lighting is not very good I'm having to use a lamp to show you but this is the master bedroom whoops sorry I uh, wish the lighting were a little better ladies the master bedroom the brass bed is made out of straws and toothpicks they're uh, plastic a plastic uh, zipper case the chair is straws. The fretwork is um, the hooks from hook and eye sets. They're all just different things. If you look closely, you can determine basically what I have used to make the things out of. The chandeliers are beads, uh, push pins. Excuse <coughs> Pardon me, ladies. Oh. The, uh, the chain is just a necklace chain. The dresser is a box. Oh, me, the sliding is just bad. The mirror is from a compact. The little perfume bottles are beads. Um, I basic, there's basically nothing in the dollhouse that is used as its original per for its original purpose everything um uh, is just you know like the little kitty cat is pom-pom fringe the washstand in the back is just some um 
floral wire that has a plastic little cup on the top for the bowl and of course the pitcher is the water pitcher to a doll's or a child's tea set as is the little chamber pot on the floor that's actually the creamer to that little set um, it was missing some pieces but it's the proper proportion my mother when she was living uh, you know back in the 60s she made all the the curtains and all the bedding for me and she could crochet so she crocheted the little wool rug and um, let's see here I'll show you the picture that I went by again and you can see that I pretty much copied everything as closely as I could now I have added a good many accessories over the years and a couple of years ago when I uh, joined Pinterest I discovered a lot of miniatures that people were making out of household items that uh, would be perfect for my dollhouse so I added an additional 60 or so accessories to my dollhouse that are not in the original um, Woman's Day article from July of 1961 okay I'll move over here this is the little girls room and this just boxes, whoops, whoops, boxes, straws, toothpicks, telephone wire for the, the little uh, fretwork in the bed, a little metal box for the bedside table. The jack-in-the-box, the spring is from a ballpoint pen and I just made the little box. Pretty much, you know, it's just things that that you would find uh, in, in your garage, in the workshop. The little house shoes are um, the little knit ponytail uh, holders that children use for their ponytails or pigtails. Uh, they're just kind of squeezed together and glued on a little cardboard base. The chair in the back is a tube, cardboard tube. I made the clown out of um, just colorful buttons. The little horse was a Christmas ornament. The teddy bear is made from pipe cleaners and the little bunny rabbit toys made from beads and felt. Contact paper, uh, it lines all the walls. The chandelier is a three-pronged fish hook with caps from tubes that I painted and uh, just added a little heart stickers to. Let's see. The wardrobe is just a box. It's covered in contact paper. I have a fishing float in the back that's like uh, for a ball and the doll inside the cradle is made exactly like the old-timey church dolls were made out of handkerchiefs. This is made out of the corner of an antique hanky. And let's see if I can move over here. I will show you my finger beside it so that you can see the proportion here. Yeah, there's my... So that is the uh, little girl's room. Now I'll show you, I'll move my light a little bit, get back over here to the picture. And, oh, excuse me. I'll show you the picture of the room in the actual doll article. That's that. And then here is my room. Then I'll come on down to the living room, which I have the house decorated for Christmas. The little arm back chairs my mother helped me make and cover. They are just Lipton tea boxes that I cut in the shape of chairs and we covered those. That is an actual 
uh, New Testament Bible that I found uh, on the school playground when I was little, and it didn't have a cover, so I took the lining out of a leather purse of my mother's and made the cover and um, painted in calligraphy the word Holy Bible, so it really is a Bible. Uh, the table, of course, is a spool. My mother crocheted the little doily there. The lamp is just made from beads. The glasses are made, let's see if I can get that, from, you know, hooks and eyes. It's just a, a hook that has, a large hook that's been bent out. Um, the little candy tray or cookie tray are just buttons and a push pin for the stand. I painted the picture that's over the mantle out of oils and I found I had made a frame out of popsicle sticks but I found a little picture frame that you just I think it was at Michael's or something that you put a very small picture in and it just happened to fit perfectly inside that frame so um, I uh, put it in there and it it just looks so cute I made the little nativity for last Christmas to put in there. You, it's hard to see, but it does have a star right above the nativity. I got that idea on Pinterest, and those are just made from little wooden beads. And um, the uh, little planter is the top off of a man's aftershave bottle. The tree in the back is just made from pipe cleaners. The chandelier is, or, um, is made from toothpicks and snaps and beads, and uh, the doilies are just, you know, corners from an antique handkerchief. I have a little radio stand over here. The radio is made from the top of a man's cologne bottle, and uh, I just used... Um, tongue depressors that I cut out uh, to make the, the face of the cabinet doors and the plaques on the wall let me see if I can get in here they are just large brass buttons I wish the light were better ladies you can see those the secretary desk I just made the boxes and it has letter accessories on it with books and it has, see if I can move the little chair here. The stool is made from parts of a plastic bottle top and a leather, covered leather button. And the door knob is just a push pin. And the little wreath was a, an actual pin that someone made uh, that you could put on your blouse. Uh, the umbrella stand is the top to a cologne bottle and the legs are just jewelry parts. And actually ladies, I have, uh, I got this on Pinterest, but I took apart a tea light and the little electrical part that's run by a battery that blinks. Um, I crushed some beads, some uh, golden color beads and put it in the fireplace and it twinkles just like a fire. Uh, I do that at Christmas time. I don't have one of those uh, going at the moment, but it lasts for over a week. So, you know, I just got the tea light at the Dollar Tree and it just made an adorable little uh, coal fire in the fireplace there. Put the chair back. Now I'll get to my favorite room in the house which, well, let me show you some of the pieces of the living room on the, uh, the original here. I changed up a little bit. There's the secretary. Actually, I like mine better. Mine, my pieces are not quite this flimsy, but you can see where I got my ideas. And there's... There's my living room. And then here is my kitchen, which 
I'll show you on the original article. They have two shots of it. This is one of the pictures of it without the table. And let's see. These magazine pieces are just literally, they're all to pieces. They're so old. And there is a picture. Oh, I can't get in focus here. Maybe you can see it a little bit. Um, with the kitchen table. Now, see in the original, they had four different, they had four different rooms, four, two different cartons that you had to place together. And mine, my father, and my husband built it all together, uh, which I like much better. Here's the kitchen. And I have all sorts of goodies that I've made or accessories in the kitchen. Um, the telephone I made just out of little, uh, a little piece of a matchbox, some a piece of a tongue depressor, and some jewelry pieces. The canisters are nuts from nuts and bolts. They're different sizes. I painted them put flowers on them and use buttons for the tops and the little shelf is just a corner of a box and made the pot holders there. We have a corner cabinet back in the back that the casserole dish and cookie jar are just uh, tops to from bottles and I don't know if you can see the glasses that are on the shelf I have one down here on the table that you might be able to see a little bit better. Those are empty capsules that you purchase at the pharmacy. You know, a lot of people uh, have to take medicine, and um, or sometimes you can get you know empty vitamins or whatever. But they're the empty capsules, and I just stained it uh, with a little bit of food coloring so that you could see them, and made a set of glasses. And the base is just a bead and the back to um, pierced earrings. The tea set I made from acorns out of my yard, just different size acorns, and the, the spout and the handle are just pine straw. And uh, I painted that so that they would not go bad. And uh, the little oil lamp, are just, it's just beads hanging from a metal ring and uh, there again a necklace chain. The sink is from the old-fashioned clothes pins and jewelry parts for the um, faucet. I have a mop and a broom back there in the corner. Let's see, I, it may be very hard to get in there to see. I don't know if I can, if you can see that, that I made. The little rag rugs are just a placemat that I found at the Dollar Tree that I bought and cut apart and fringed. Um, the old timey stove, it's just, um, I made the box and that's a bouillon cube container. Uh, that you, That's what they used to come in back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. That's the pipe there. Uh, the cooking pieces are simply the copper pots, they're really copper. They are plumbing parts, uh, jewelry parts for the spoons. Those are little metal circles with the hooks from Hook and Eyes for the eyes on the stove. That is a soda cap with beads and in it for the cherries and little strips of cork for the crust. Those are electrical connections for the two salt and pepper shakers back there. And then over here, the um, skillets are the little trays that eyeshadow com comes in. After your eyeshadow is gone, um, I found some that were the right size. The little spoons are jewelry pieces. I just made the coffee grinder out of, I made, up, made a little box and uh, painted it and then the top is just jewelry pieces. And the little glass jars with salt and pepper in them, those are actually little crystal or whatever. I'm not really sure what they're called, but they came from the Dollar Tree and they are to go on uh, to decorate your fingernails. 
And of course, the chairs are straws and toothpicks. The table is a spool with beads on the bottom, and it's a piece of floor tile that's uh, covered, and I made the tablecloth for it. And I have a little uh, pretty fancy button back here with donuts on it, and those donuts are just Cheerios that I've painted the little uh, sprinkles on. So everything is basically just odds and ends, ladies, that you find around the house. It did take me a long time to, to make it, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm going to see if I can scoot back. I'm on the floor. I'm going to have to scoot back to see if I can get the whole house in the picture. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not. Oh, this is not too good. <laughs> um, but the front of the house and the roof are tongue depressors. I ordered a box from the pharmacy and I cut each individual one off and glued them on individually. But um, let's see if I can get, oh, I really can't get back far enough. Maybe this will give you an idea of what it looks like. I really do wish it were better and my hands were more steady but I've enjoyed showing you my dollhouse. Um, you know, I'd love for you to comment if you have any questions about what something is. I'll be happy to tell you. I just didn't want the uh, video to just go on and on and on. So I will close for now and hope you ladies have a good afternoon and thank you so much for watching. Love and hugs from Gloria. Bye-bye.